Welcome back to Sleeper Sports Media Podcast. I'm Nick Wietosh, and this is episode 33. I'm going to kick things off tonight with uh, some NFL news. We're looking at tomorrow, the games tomorrow, uh, AFC North preview. Starting off the second half of the season, what I'm calling the second half of the season, um, the Steelers-Ravens, Bengals-Browns. Why are there still ties in the NFLs? In the NFL? Um, so the Steelers-Ravens game, this is going to be a great, Regardless of, actually, let me restart. <clears throat> I'm sure if the Steelers look good, they're playing well, and they win, no one's going to give them the credit that, that they're going to be dealt and they deserve the credit that they deserve. Everyone's going to say, well, Lamar was hurt. Lamar didn't play. They had other injuries. That's just an excuse. It's just gonna just an excuse. Um, the, the other half of the AFC North, the Bengals and Browns, they're playing tomorrow. And I'm torn. I don't know who I need to win more and who I need to lose more. I guess I guess it won't matter because until the Steelers play the Browns, that's going to be the deciding factor because the Steelers would have to beat the Browns and then sweep the Ravens and beat the Browns and then sweeping one team and splitting with the other two should be enough depending on what happens to the Ravens with whenever they play the other two in their remaining games against each other. Um, last week, the Giants and Commanders ended in a tie. Why do we still have ties in the NFL? I don't get it. I don't like it. I don't want it. They need to play to win even in the regular season. They do it in the playoffs, so they should do it in the regular season. What's the toughest division in football? Is it the AFC East? Is it the, not the AFC, the NFC East? Is it the NFC North, a AFC North. Regardless of how how the records are looking for the a AFC North, what's the worst division in football? Probably the NFC South or the AFC South. The best teams: Bills, Chiefs. Worst teams: Texans, Colts. <laughs> um, up and coming or rebuild teams, obviously, would be the Steelers. Um, that definitely shouldn't be taken lightly because they're finally starting to get a rhythm. Everyone's playing together everyone's staying healthy chris boswell's back tj watts better and uh deontay johnson will, are both going to play tomorrow all three of those guys are going to play tomorrow von miller is out for the season with an a acl tear um and the steelers with tj watt versus without tj watt are three and one with one and six without um, opponents rushing yards per game with 83.5 and without 115.7 11 takeaways with him playing five without 14 sacks with him eight without him baker mayfield was released from the panthers per in rap report and rap sheet thought that he would be claimed by the niners but he also said that the rams could take him just so the niners can't which is what ended up happening and he got to la Within 48 hours of being picked up, released and then picked up, and then went on a put on a game-winning performance, a 98-yard touchdown to win the game, it was awesome. Great performance. Very happy for Baker. Hope he has success in LA or anywhere else besides Cleveland, just to show that Cleveland was the issue, not Baker. Some NCAA news: Liberty will play Toledo in the Boca Raton Bowl. Uh, number 11, Penn State, will, opens at as one-and-a-half-point favorites versus Utah, number eight, Utah, in the Rose Bowl. And the Rose Bowl was the last college football playoff bowl to sign off and approve the expansion for 12 teams for next year. And the final college football playoff rankings and one through four who are going to be in the playoffs, Georgia, Michigan, TCU, and Ohio State. There's been a lot of back and forth on why TCU is in with a loss in, the, in their conference championship whatever um again the rose bowl the game i'm going to be focused on penn state and utah hopefully penn state gets the win and sean clifford ends his long long enough reign as the quarterback at penn state with a win and on a high note uh alex ovechkin ovechkin has 791 goals which is an insane milestone he could have more this was from a couple days ago the same night when chris letang had another stroke 
and it's been reported that he is back skating again, which is great news. It's, I believe it's his second stroke, um, which is insane that he is still playing. Um, there was a, a couple weeks ago, there was a video that popped up and someone was asking Ovechkin if him and Sid played on the same team, how that would work out. And I, I have a question now. What if Sid and Ovechkin played on the same team outside of the All-Star game? Little, I know I don't cover much basketball, but a little NBA news tied in with some hockey. This Boston Celtics and Bruins both go a combined 16 or no at the TD Garden in the month of November. And now into what I really, what I really do, what everyone comes to this channel for. Some WWE and AEW news. The Rock is rumored rumored to return for a, for the Royal Rumble. Will he win? We don't know. I think that Cody Rhodes should win. But I also think that Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns should be defending both titles on night one against The Rock. And then night two, both again. No, let me rephrase. There's been back and forth between if he's going to do that or if he's just going to do one on one. I think the latest rumor that I saw from ringside said that he will defend the Universal versus Rock on night one or the WWE against Cody on night one. He loses that one and then night two, he defends the Universal against the Rock and he wins. And I think that's why only the Universal title was shown in the episode of Young Rock that kind of, again, hinted and planted seeds that he's could be returning. Dusty Rhodes announced on Instagram or Twitter, one of the two, that he's planning to retire in 2023. Um, more more uh, seeds were planted, like I said, in Young Rock, that The Rock could make a comeback and face Roman at WrestleMania. Uh, last week on Raw, there were two triple threat matches to determine the number one contendership for the Raw Women's Championship or a future Raw Women's Championship opportunity. Um, and the, the winners were Alexa Bliss and Bailey, and they now face against, face against each other this coming Monday on Raw for that championship opportunity. My guess would, would be that it will, it'll happen at the Royal Rumble. And Bray Wyatt's uncle, Barry Woodham, has suffered a second heart attack now and is in the ICU. Uh, Bray Wyatt took today on Instagram to post the story of what happened. Um, apparently Barry's heart stopped for 10 to 20 minutes and someone was there whenever he went down and collapsed and gave him CPR until the EMTs got there. Um, so that's very kind of sad for, for Bray, but I hope he's, I hope his uncle gets better and Bray continues to stay in a healthy mindset. And, uh, Kofi Kingston was the first superstar this year to declare for the Royal Rumble. Um, AEW news. Jake Hager signed a multi-year deal with AEW, and William Regal is free to go back to WWE at the start of the new year. However, he cannot be on TV until 2024. This was per Fightful from the Tony Khan media call for the Ring of Honor pay-per-view that happened earlier today or tonight. Um, and then uh, a NXT premium live event tonight deadline, the Men's Iron Survivor Challenge, which will determine the number one contender for the NXT championship, is... Carmelo Hayes, J.D. McDonough, Grayson Waller, Joey Glacey, and the this my notes were from before the wild card winner from NXT on Tuesday. Uh, my pick is going to be Carmelo Hayes without even knowing who the wild card winner was because I don't watch NXT. I'm going to watch this tonight just to kind of for something to watch. Um, the Women's Iron Survivor Challenge to determine the number one contender for the NXT Women's Championship. Zoe Stark, Cora Jade, Roxanne Perez, Kiana James, and the Wild Card winner. Same thing. Uh, my pick's going to be Cora Jade. The NXT Championship is Braun Breaker versus Apollo Crews. And then the New Day actually are challenging for the NXT Tag Team Championships. Um, and they... It would be cool to see them win and become a... Uh, the um, Triple Crown Tag Team Champions. I just, I don't think, I don't know if, if they'll, 
they'll be able to do it. I'd, I'd love to see them do it, but who knows if they're actually going to get the win and then would they be, would they just be on NXT? I think this is just kind of a way to, to hype up because then they showed up on SmackDown last night and they, they plugged it that it was going to be on Peacock tonight at 8 o'clock. Um, yes, Pretty Deadly versus The New Day. And then Alba Fryer, Fire versus Isla Dawn. Don't know who either of those two are. Um, Braun Breaker is my pick for his match against Apollo Crews. Oh, and the the looks like the wild card winner was Indy Hartwell. So Core Jade or Indy Hartwell are my pick. Um, and the wild card winner was Axiom. So my pick is still Carmelo Hayes or Grayson Waller. Probably Carmelo Hayes for the men's. And I'd say Core Jade for the women's. Braun, ba- Braun Breaker and what the heck I'm picking the new day to win the NXT tag titles um, and then Alba Fire too and that's NXT deadline uh, UFC and boxing UFC 282 is tonight um, Robbie Lawler is out there their, his match was cancelled um, and I have the rest of the card later in the episode I'll make my picks like I know who any of those guys are, any of those guys are besides Patty the Batty. Um, KSI and Dylan Danis are fighting on January 14th on the Misfits 4 card, and Swarms is now on the card. Logan Paul was to be on the card and face Dylan Danis, which me- makes me think KSI was going to fight Tyron Woodley if Logan would have fought Dylan. But obviously with Logan's injury from Crown Jewel, he is not. He's out of action. But he is rehabbing the knee already and already running on it, which is incredible. Um, I did. I watched a program with Jake Paul the other night, and I have a couple quotes that um, I found interesting from him from the episode and uh, more like tidbits on just Jake and um, how Tommy, why Tommy Fury, I think, is going to be his next opponent and why I think Jake is miles above a real professional boxer in Tommy Fury, if you can even call Fury a real professional boxer. Tommy Fury has one six-round fight, and I think he's like 10-0, and and all of his other fights have been four-round, four-rounders. Um, Jake said that Tommy Fury was is a 10 times easier fight than Anderson Silva was, so if Jake is going to fight Fury... Tommy Fury in February on the undercard of Fury versus Usyk. Tyson Fury versus Usyk, which is the rumor that's going around now. Um, Not a separate pay-per-view for the two, which will be interesting. Um, I always like Jake as the main event, so torn to see if I'll still buy it. And hopefully it's, I guess it would be through DAZN, so that's going to suck. I'll have to re-up my DAZN membership. Um, But Jake... Jake has always put the sport of boxing above earning above earning money from it. Um, he he he's in this to earn the respect, and he goes from opponent to opponent, upping the skill level each time. And no one no one respects that. No one gets that. Um, everyone wants him to fight a real boxer. He's tried, and whenever it doesn't work out, he just he picks a fight that's going to be harder than what a real boxer would be. Because if you would, if you're matching him up against a boxer, his age, his weight, and how many his experience, it, it's not going to be a big money fight. He's he's in it for the respect and for the love of the sport, but he's also an entertainer. He wants to put on that big huge event. He wants to sell the fight, and obviously he wants to make money from it. Um, he went on to say that everyone thought this was a joke, and his mouth was bigger than his actions, um, and now. And now that's completely changed and turned around. He also went on to say that, uh, including Logan, we're athletes, but we're entertainers at heart. We had a treehouse. We would jump out of onto our trampoline as kids. So that's why Logan is comfortable flying through the air off the top rope. And that's why he thinks Logan is a perfect fit for the WWE and Jake is a perfect fit for boxing. He also stated that he makes about 10 to $20 million per fight. So he can easily make about $50 million per year just from fighting if he fights three times roughly like i said jake paul versus tommy fury is rumored to be the co-main event of tyson fury fury versus Usyk. ashton ashton h2o sill will be returning to the ring in february on the jake paul undercard was a rumor from mvp updates but i don't know if that will still be the case if if it's not jake jake's fight and jake's pay-per-view 
Um, same with Amanda Serrano. She was seen working out on Instagram. And UFC 286 was announced to be Mar uh, March 18th, 2023 in London. And now the UFC 282 card, the World Light Lightweight Championship. Jan Bloskovich versus Magomed Anklov. No idea who these guys are. Lightweight, a lightweight bout, Patty Pimblett. Patty the Batty versus Jared Gordon. Uh, the welterweight bout was Robbie Lawler versus Santiago Ponsabibio. That was canceled. Robbie Lawler is apparently hurt. Middleweight bout, Darren Till versus Drixis Du Plessis. And a featherweight bout, Bryce Mitchell versus Ela Topura. That is UFC, some combat sports news. Going into entertainment. Um, Margot Robbie wants to have an on-screen romance between Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn. Tom Holland. <clears throat> I think I saw a graphic of Tom Holland as Ben 10, and I think he would be a perfect fit if they ever brought uh, Ben 10 onto the big screen. It was rumored that Sasha Banks rapped on her first movie, which was filmed in Boston, and that would explain why she didn't return for survivor series she was focusing on that um will smith has a new movie called Emancip emancipation that's coming to apple tv it's rated r and it looks really good there's a documentary coming out about rick flair coming to peacock on monday december 26th um and i saw stephen a smith mike tyson um uh, stone cold steve austin and so many other big names that are involved in it so that's going to be exciting to watch I'm um, going to some MLB news. Trey Turner signed an 11-year deal, 11-year, $300 million deal with the Phillies, which is where he wanted to go. Aaron Judge was offered eight years and $300 million from the Yankees, and it was rumored that his deal would likely, the deal he would sign would likely be nine years, and he ended up signing and agreeing to a nine-year, $360 million deal with the Yankees, which is what he was offered from the Giants. <clears throat> He turned down $400 million from the Padres, which is insane. And it's likely that he will be named captain of the New York Yankees. The Yankees also signed Brian Cashman to a four-year extension as the general manager. And Aaron, Aaron Judge was named to the MLB first team for the second year in a row. And some... some New, a new sport that I haven't covered on here before, but I'm going to start with the with the season coming up right up around the corner. The XFL, the team uniforms, logos have all been revealed. The season will start on February 18th, which is one week after the Super Bowl. Training camps begin in January. Arlington will be the hub of the XFL, and there will be a combined training camp with all eight teams. Um, there's some new teams, new names, new cities, old teams, old names, old cities. The Arlington Renegades, formerly known as the Dallas, I actually have a Dallas Renegades jersey, uh, Landry Jones, and now I don't know what to do with it, along with the football that I have. The DC Defenders will remain as one of the old teams from the 2020 XFL, along with the Houston Roughnecks, um, and the Orlando Guardians. The Guardians were in New York, so there's no New York team, and the Orlando Orlando did have a team, the Vipers, which are now moved. The a new team, the San Antonio Brahmas, which are black and yellow, and it fits because the head coach is Heinz Ward. He even said that he loved those colors, and I can't imagine why. The Seattle Sea Dragons are a team. I believe the Seattle, it was the Seattle Dragons in 2020, so they just added the C in front of it. And the St. Louis Battlehawks, which are probably the most popular team in the XFL, um, the biggest fan base, and they drew 56,000 in attendance in two home games in 2020. And now the new, the new, another new team, the Las Vegas Vipers, um, their colors are red and black with the same sort of logo as uh, Orlando. Um, the rules for are changing a little bit for the upcoming XFL season. Um, it looks like the play clock is going to be 35 seconds. Overtime scoring rounds decrease from five to three attempts per team. 
and there is now an option to keep a ball with a fourth and 15 uh, for a conversion instead of an onside kick in the fourth quarter only. There are now three timeouts per half, and the head coach has one challenge per game, and they can challenge anything. Anything is challengeable, even a foul not called on the field. Um, it looks like they were talking a lot about their kickoff rules, and one of the biggest things they had for that was that the NFL, the NFL is heading towards 35% of their kickoffs not being returned, which would be a record low. So that's why the XFL has some different kickoff rules. There are eight teams which will play 10 games and four teams make the playoffs. The games will be exclusive to ESPN, ESPN2, ABC, and FX. Uh, Monday Night Raw review from last week. Uh, the Undisputed Tag Team Championship, the Usos versus Matt Riddle and Elias, who was taken out before the show even started and then was replaced with a mystery opponent. For a brief second, I thought maybe this could be Randy Orton, but then I was like, no, it's probably not. And then, of course, it was Kevin Owens. It was a great match. The Usos won. Um, the triple threat <clears throat> match, number one, Asuka, Rhea Ripley, and Bailey. Bailey won the United States Championship. This ended in, this, in a disqualification. So Austin Theory won and retained. Retained. There was then a six-way tag match, uh, the OC versus Corbin and Alpha Academy that bro uh, was impromptu after the OC was involved in the uh, JBL poker tournament. And then there was a singles match of Dominic Mysterio versus Akira Tozawa. And then the main event was the triple th other triple, th triple threat match, Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross, and Becky Lynch. I thought Becky was going to win. She didn't. Alexa Bliss won, won, and now we have Bailey versus Alexa Bliss on this coming Monday, which is going to be fun. Um, again, Raw is in Milwaukee this upcoming Monday, and it is Bobby Lashley versus Seth Rollins for the number one contenders match for the United States Championship. I think Seth Rollins is going to win, and I think that because he was advertised for another matchup against Theory uh, at the upcoming WWE live event holiday tour in Hershey, which I am going to. EO Sky will also face Candice LeRae this up this week on Raw. Um, the DQ in the Austin Theory match versus Mustafa Ali was by Dolph Ziggler, so Dolph Ziggler returned. I would love to see Dolph Ziggler jump into the United States title picture. Maybe just have him feud with M Mustafa Ali while Seth and Theory continue to do their thing. Um, another thing I've noticed since Triple H has took over is he's been big on building fraction, factions and groups. Um, the OC, he brought the OC back together. He got the, you got the Judgment Day. You got Damage Control. Um, Team Bianca is still kind of together in a sense. Um, you have the Bloodline and Team Brute, obviously. Um, another interesting thing was that Alexa Bliss was shown backstage warming up and Lily was beside her. And the Bray Wyatt logo popped up yet again and Corey Graves had a funny quote he called Dominic Mysterio the Pete Davidson of WWE and the apple of every girl's eye across the world from Rhea Ripley to the Kardashians to Jenner's in between I don't know why he said this but I know one person who absolutely agrees with that and that is my friend Jen who I miss a lot at work and I hope she's back soon and it looks like that is going to wrap up this episode of Sleeper Sports Media, episode number 33. Um, thank you for listening, subscribing, and following along with my schoolwork and all the stuff that I love to talk about. So um, please join my Facebook group, Sleeper Sports Media, on Facebook. Add me on Facebook. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter at nwetosh, Instagram, at nwetosh, and join the Exceptional Sports News group on Facebook as well. And my next episode will will be Monday with, with another guest and a returning guest at that point. It is uh, Exceptional Sports News' own Mystic Mary. Uh, me and Keenan will be reviewing the NFL Week 14, um, and that's going to be that's going to be Monday. Um, going to hopefully get that out as a live show if not it'll be on anchor spotify and i will also put that onto youtube so thanks again for listening watching and also subscribe to my youtube and that's gonna do it so again 
all my socials I threw out there. Please subscribe, share, and thank you for the continuous, continued support. Really appreciate it. And this has been Sleeper Sports Media Podcast with Nick Wietosh. Thank you. Have a good night.